Um, I'm actually an accidental Chamber of Commerce director. Uh, just like most things in my life um, happen to be accidents that are probably triggered uh, by my wife more than they are by me. Um, six years ago when I interviewed for the Chamber position, it was largely because my wife, after um, being asked to interview and, and going through a second interview, said, well, this job doesn't pay enough for me, but um, I know someone who might like it. Uh, it's my husband. And uh, so, so that's kind of how it happened, and that's how the, the crazy journey began with the organization. In uh, 2006, my wife and I, uh, along with our partner Jim Lumley and, and his wife uh, Mimi Dakin, bought uh, what was for a while uh, Wonder Arts, which is now a really great restaurant called the Lumberyard. And um, it was there where we got to you know, actually have a hands-on experience of, of uh, fixing up a space and it was something that I've never done before but, but actually worked and you know, tore things down almost died during a uh, demolition uh, accident that, that happened that, that is a long but funny story. And uh, we, uh, we, we built it up and, and we, we created a place that was kind of a living room for the community and, and, and a place for, for local art. So again, merging passions is, is something that we were doing there. And uh, the, the chamber job just became an outgrowth of that. It, it, it merged a whole bunch of interests, and I don't think that, that I had any idea that, uh, that, that something like a Chamber of Commerce director would, would be that type of job. I mean, no one wakes up uh, when you're eight years old and says, I want to be a Chamber of Commerce director. It's just not what you do. Um, and um, after owning a gallery and working in, in the museum world, I mean, sure as heck didn't feel sexy at all. Uh, but, uh, but actually what it, what it did do was, um, you know, I think it combined my interests in, in the, the place where I live. Uh, I grew up right outside of Asbury Park, New Jersey, which was a town that um, when I was growing up was, it looked a little bit like Beirut. Um, but, it, but it had a bunch of potential and great bones and a great history. And you can always see that, that, that something w was there and was lurking. And, Kind of the same thing here in Amherst, except you know it's actually much more beautiful. And but but the potential was always there. And um, you know I worked at the Emily Dickinson Museum and then for Museums 10. So so not only did I love what we had here in terms of our cultural assets, we moved up here for the the Art Carl Museum. But it was uh, you know, working for Museums 10 and becoming a real advocate for for the entire area, and, and that's where we fell in love. I think I always looked at the, the, the chamber as uh, as a transformative organization, or at least it could be. Um, and I don't think that you could uh, transform a community, transform the way people think, um, without uh, without really being dedicated to service. And that and that was uh, the hallmark of my time. I, I, you know, I strove to be accessible. I strove to um, make sure that um, we were always listening. We were always trying to be responsive and, and, and to be a part of a solution. I did think and I still think because of, of the influence of the university and, and the colleges that, that we can be a leader where we can try and experiment with new ideas here that um, really can be a, a testing ground for, for the rest of the country and, and a whole bunch of great ideas, you know. Uh, we haven't quite got there yet, but, but we can because this is the type of place where you walk past a Nobel laureate at any time or uh, a very important rock star and we have a couple of them that live on Lincoln Avenue. So it, it's, it's an amazing, amazing place to be. You know, I, I've done splits for my audience. I've done um, a whole host of silly things. Um, had the opportunity to uh, you know, uh, do some shows with Amherst Media that, that were um, both ridiculously funny and very memorable and I continue to hear about them. I uh, had the great fortune of uh, being able to have a voice for four and a half years with the Amherst Bulletin and, and, and to write an article. And, and to me I think that uh, I, I'm so fortunate uh, to have had this job and had those opportunities, and none of that comes about without incredible amount of support from a great staff that uh, that helped make me look good all the time, 
uh, from Tammy Lynn Chase and, and, and Hope Keenan and, and Sarah Coopermans and uh, oh yeah, uh, Joan Temkin who, who was there and was, it was so much like uh, my mom, you know, uh, keeping me in line and being my sounding board and my consigliere as I like to say. And then I had a great board that, that had um, a number of terrific leaders, um, the ever uh, fun and, 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 you know, always entertaining and, and, and really, really smart Cindy Jones and Molly Keegan and, and Dave Perlmutter. I don't think I've ever laughed on the phone with anybody more. Uh, Karen, uh, Catherine Grandonico and, and, and Larry Archie, you know, offered uh, some great leadership as well. And so it, the support that I've had, um, it, it, you know, it doesn't, it's never alone. And I couldn't be more appreciative and more proud of that time. Thank you to the Amherst Area Chamber of Commerce for naming me the third MVP, um, also known as the Yusef Fidel Award. It's a real honor to have uh, been chosen and I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart.